Fabio. Howdy! <laughs> What's up guys? Fabio here once again and I want to welcome you to a VHS and laser disc update. I uh, got a ton of VHS tapes in this haul and uh, some stuff that you have already seen. Uh, some laser discs and a VHS tape that you have already seen in the unpackaging video that I did but I figured I might as well just include them in here for people that did not see the unpackaging video or, or just to talk a little bit more about them. Um, I do actually have one more VHS tape coming in the mail that I bought. I just have not paid for it yet because I'm waiting for something to come through. Um, so I'll include that in the DVD update. I have a couple of DVDs coming in the mail that I have not uh, received yet and I didn't get many DVDs this time so that update will probably be really short. Um, I do have another laser disc uh, that already came but I'm waiting because I'm trying to get more of laser discs with that particular actor and if that's the case because there's a couple lots on eBay that has a, most of the movies of his um, if that's if I win those, I'll just tack them on to the next, the DVD update that I have, you know, upcoming. Um, but let's get started, shall we? First, before I get into any DVDs, laser discs, whatever, um, I was out today, and I bought a magazine. Um, uh, I knew this magazine was coming out, um, so I wanted to get it, and my friend uh, texted me yesterday with a picture of this magazine and he got it so um, now um, I went out today and I got it and I got this is it this month or well, April's issue of Maxim magazine which has Topanga on the cover so yeah <laughs> Topanga is more like it so if you wanna if you wanna get this go out to your local newsstand or your local Walmart and pick it up. It is $5.99, but it is definitely worth it. And then it came with like this little like lingerie magazine. Damn! That's all I gotta say. And yeah, Topanga, she I mean, she was always cute on the show, and then as the show progressed, she got hot, and now damn! And she's like thinking here, she's like 31, she said, and she's getting ready to get married, and she's got like a couple of tattoos and shit. It's like damn! <laughs> What happened? <laughs> anyway, let's start with the laser discs. Now, the first two you've already seen, but I'm just going to include them in here for, you know, to the sake of doing a video. Uh, first up, 10 to Midnight with Charles Bronson. I showed it in my unpackaging video. Got this one brand new. Was, was very surprised that it was brand new. Love that original poster artwork. And there's the back. A great... Uh, movie. It's basically Charles Bronson's version of like Friday the Thirteenth because it's a it's a it's kind of a slasher film if you think about it, but a very good one at that. And I'll talk more about Ten to Midnight in a little bit. And then this one you already saw, which was Beavis and Butthead: The Essential Collection Laser Disc. This is the only laser disc release to ever come out. It includes the first two VHS tapes that came out which is There Goes the Neighborhood and Work Sucks, which uh, I have 
work sucks. I don't have There Goes the Neighborhood, but I have the DVD of There Goes the Neighborhood, which I'll explain in the DVD update. So that was pretty good. And this next two you have not seen yet. This first one I actually just received in the mail today. Uh, very surprised of how quick it got here because it shipped out Monday and today's Thursday and it came from California and I know when stuff comes from the other side of the country it takes a little bit longer but this came pretty quick which I was very surprised. Um, this movie is a sequel. I have the original on Laserdisc and um, this one it's out of print on DVD. The DVD is very hard to find and so is this Laserdisc. I guess people are holding on to them because of the DVD being out of print but Always enjoyed this sequel. I think it's very underrated, just like the first film. And that is Fright Night Part 2. Great vampire movie. And the last laser disc that I'm going to show is... This one's actually pretty rare. I've only ever seen it one time. Sorry, I'm out of frame. On eBay, and this is the only... You know, I bought it because I've never seen it on eBay before. Uh, on Laserdisc, I see it on VHS and DVD all the time. But I had this movie on VHS and DVD. I love this movie. It's a, a childhood favorite, a childhood classic for me at least. Um, I know that this movie does get a lot of flack, but I've always enjoyed it. I, I, not, I really think I'm the only person that likes this movie because I never hear people talk good about it. But I've always liked it, um, and that is Surf Ninjas. I mean, Ernie Reyes Jr. was a big guy, you know, big uh, influence on me as a kid, you know, and now, I mean, still. Um, I love Surf Ninjas, just a lot of fun, you know, cheese ball fun. There's the back. Just I just love Surf Ninjas. Can't get enough of it. Okay, now I'm going to um, get into some of the VHS. First, just to get him out of the way, I'm going to do Power Rangers. Um... I got all these off of eBay. Well, Power Rangers and VR Troopers. Uh, I got off these all off eBay. They were really cheap. They're, the boxes aren't in the best shape, but the tapes play fine, which is fine by me. But, you know, with this kind of stuff, with Power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, to find stuff like the VHSs in really good condition is really hard, you know. But it, I, still, I just wanted to get them. But first I got... This one's in the worst shape. Um, when a... It's... It says, the episode is actually called When a Ranger is Not a Ranger. But on the box it says, When a Power Ranger. It says, When is a Power Ranger not a Power Ranger? But the episode is actually called When a Ranger is Not a Ranger. You know? Or, When a Ranger. When is a Ranger not a. Uh, that, that, that. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see right there that the box is, you know, ripped. But the tape. This one actually played okay. It had some pretty bad tracking and skipping issues. But I could probably fix it. But this is the episode where Lord Zed created the kaleidoscope or uh, scattered brain monster out of Adam's kaleidoscope, Johnny Young Bosch. And the Power Rangers actually lose their memories. And Bulk and Skull actually save them and find out who they are. But then they lose their memories. But this was a good episode. I remember watching this one. So that's that one. I'm actually trying to get all the Power Rangers VHS. I don't have many to go. I think I have seven or eight to get yet and then I'll be good on all of them but this one is actually a replacement copy it is lights camera action I had another one of this that I bought at a closeout store but it actually did not have the box and the tape at the end just shuts off it you know the tape didn't play the whole way through um, but this is the one where the Power Rangers go on this talk show um, it was alright I mean it wasn't a great episode but it was okay I mean I liked it so but the but yeah the box is pretty good it's still got some gloss on it but this was a it was alright episode and then this one was a uh, special VHS they did it was direct to video I actually remember renting this as a kid and liking it but I was always confused because I always thought that this was the Halloween episode and it has clips from the Halloween episode but it's actually not that complete episode but uh, I mean I got this really cheap. Um, but I've always, I mean, I liked it when I rented it, and I liked it watching it again. I mean, it's, it's good. I like it. It's called Lord Zed's Monster Heads. It's just a bunch of clips from different battles and stuff like that. But it's fun for what it is, so that's that one. And the last one is actually a VR Troopers tape. For some reason, these tapes are really hard to find. I've only, I have two of them, 
Uh, this one I got off of eBay. The other one I found at an antique mall for like a dollar. And I picked it up because, you know, I needed it. And I have another one, but the box is different. Like, the tape is different from the box, which is a bummer, but oh well. But I need to get the other three because I did five of these. So I have to replace the, the wrong one that I have and then, you know, get the other two. Um, so I need to get, yeah, those, and then I'll be good to go on these VHS tapes. But this one I actually remember renting from Blockbuster as a kid. And I remember it was right around Christmas. Um, they were doing like a 90, like five for like 99 cent deal on VHS. You could rent like five VHS tapes for like a dollar or 99 cents, whatever it was. I remember renting this and probably a couple other Power Rangers tapes and a Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad tape. Um, and this was when I started to really get back into Power Rangers. I was, I think I was like in sixth or seventh grade when I actually got a computer and started, you know, doing more research about Power Rangers. And that's when I found out that, you know, it comes from Super Sentai from Japan and everything. That's when I started getting more in depth into it. Um, but this one is Computer Captive. This was a pretty good episode. This is where JB right there gets captured by Grimlord and Ryan has to go in and save him. But this was a pretty good episode. And I know a lot of people, like, people are split on the other shows Saban did, VR Troopers, Beetleborgs, uh, Mass Rider, Mystic Knights. People, you either like them or you don't like them, you know. But I've always liked the other shows. I like VR Troopers. I love Beetleborgs. Mass Rider is really underrated. Mystic Knights was awesome. So, I mean, I, I've always liked the other shows they did. And I liked VR Troopers, so that's all those. And I'll do the Ninja Turtles tapes. This first one, my uh, my bro, Kevin, um, a.k.a. Red Hat Guy, for those of you that watched the Dino Thunder review. Um, he bought this at, like, a Goodwill or something. And he posted it on Facebook. I'm like, and I was, I was messing with him. I'm like, you know, you're that's the only one that I don't have in that series. I'm like, you suck. You know, just messing with them. He's like, if you want it, you can have it. You know, I don't really need it. You know, I just kind of picked it up. I'm like, no, it's like you spent your money on that. That's yours, you know. But I went to his, his house because his girlfriend had come down because she lives in Ohio and he lives in Maryland. Um, and... He, uh, it was their anniversary, so they had, like, a little get-together. You know, just a couple people. It wasn't a big thing. Me and a couple other people were there. Uh, just a little thing, you know. Um, but he, uh, when I was leaving, he went down to his room in the basement, and he got this, and he, like, he kept, like, you know, like, pushing it on me and everything. I'm like, will you stop? We're just messing with each other. I'm like, will you stop? He's like, no. He's like, you need it more than I do. You like it more than I do here. I'm like, fine, whatever. You know, we're just, just goofing. But um, I, he gave me the uh, Nin Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Invasion of the Turtle Snatchers from the Burger King series. Now, I had all these when I was younger, along with a bunch of other Ninja Turtle tapes and Power Rangers and so on. And they all magically disappeared. I think my dad sold them or took them to the flea market or something, which, whatever. But uh, this was the last one that I needed. This was the one where the, uh, the aliens come. You know, one of the many episodes of Ninja Turtles where aliens are involved. Um, but this is the one where they're like good aliens and they come and, and uh, Donatello and I think it's uh, Bebop uh, go into their spaceship and stuff. And it was a good episode. But I now have all four of the nin of the Burger King videos, which is April Foolish, The Great Baldini, and Sky Turtles. So I'm trying to get all of the Ninja Turtles original series VHS as well so that's that so and then this one you already saw which is the pizza box the turtle power to go pizza box which has the marketing presentation video it's only about 10 minutes it's just saying like you know we'll be on 30 different cable networks and 20 different radio networks and everything and so that's all that's on there. And then I showed you all the posters and everything that came in that. So, but just this kind of, you know, this kind of stuff, you know, they don't make anymore. And it's just, just so cool to have this kind of stuff. You know, this stuff is really one of a kind, this kind of stuff. So there you go. Okay, now I'm going to get more into movies and stuff like that. So 
let's get started. First up is a Bruce Lee movie. I uh, have this already on VHS, but I wanted to get this particular release because I really like the artwork, and when you put the spines together, they make a design. So I need, uh, I think, just the Chinese connection, and I'll have all the, the ones in this release. Um, but I got Game of Death. Now, this is a movie, like I said in my review, you love it or you hate it. And I love it. You know, it's Bruce Bloitation at its best or worst, depending on how you look at it, you know. So there you go. And like I said, when you put the tapes together, they make this dragon design, which is just really cool. So that's that. And I actually went on eBay one night, and I found this. I was looking around for this, and I actually ended up finding it. Um, just, I love this movie so much, um, and this guy so much. Um, so I got a full-length screener copy of The Crow, and this includes a behind-the-scenes featurette. Um, I think it also has the last interview with Brandon. Um, so don't mind having another copy of The Crow. This is a screener copy. Um, it just will say at the bottom, like, if you have purchased this tape, please call this number. And, and it's got, you know, promotional stuff on it. And just, just cool to have. Haven't watched it yet, but. And I was at a Goodwill, and I figured they had this movie. And I figured I just might as well give it another shot. It's been a long time since I've seen this. And this is actually the director's cut, which I've never seen this version. Um, but, you know, I wanted to check this movie out again because uh, Tui Trang, who played Trini on Power Rangers, is in this. And, you know, she didn't really do much besides Power Rangers. So I want to check this out for her. And she plays a villain in this. So I got The Crow, City of Angels. So I'll try this movie out again. But it also includes... Uh, never before seen footage, must see Brandon Lee tribute, and three music videos. So maybe that'll be interesting, and I'll just hold on to the tape for that. Because um, I don't know if they're on the DVD or not. But, I mean, I'll give this movie another try. I mean, I remember not liking it whatsoever. But Thomas Jane's also in this. This is one of his first movies. Um, so, yeah, maybe I'll like it for that. We'll see. So, yeah, it's worth another, for, it was like 99 cents, it's worth another shot for 99 cents. Uh, next up is a uh, sports video. Um, I'm not really big into sports. I mean, I like baseball, which this is, is that's pretty much the, the sport I'm into the most. I like boxing and martial arts, not MMA, I don't like MMA, just regular, you know, martial arts, like Chuck Norris, you know, when he fought, that kind of martial arts. Um, but... I never even knew this existed until I saw it at a thrift store, and it's one actually across the street from my house that way. Um, and the lady's actually really nice. I go in all the time, and you know we're getting to know each other. And she's always, you know, well if you, you know, if you're looking for something specific, let me know, or you know, I'll let you know when new stuff comes in. You know, you build a good rapport with people, and you know, guys, if you know if, if you go to thrift stores and close out stores and those kind of places. You got to get in tight with the owners and stuff because they will help you, believe me. Um, the one closeout store that I always talk about, that guy, um, his son was his really into wrestling. And I sold, like, I used to have a lot of wrestling tapes, more than, you know, now I'm getting back into the older stuff. But I sold all that stuff to him and, you know, he just let me get stuff, you know, for free sometimes. You know, he, uh, he cut me some deals and... That's what you got to do. You got to get in tight at your thrift stores and your your flea markets and everything because if you make good connections with people, they'll get you stuff. They'll let you see stuff early. You got to do it, you know. But this one, you know, I never saw. And, you know, she's like, oh, you found some today. I'm like, yeah, I've never seen this. But, you know, this is my team. This has my, always been my team. Um, I know last year they were really hot and people hopped on the bandwagon. But I've been a diehard fan of this team. Probably since I was in the womb. <laughs> but this is called uh, Orioles 89, Why Not? The Story of the 89 Orioles. So there you go. And uh, it's got a little thing about super fresh grocery stores on the back. I don't even know if they're still around. You know, down in Baltimore and stuff. I don't even know if super fresh is still around. But can't wait to check this out. I, I love the O's. They're my team. I've, just, I've been a diehard O's fan forever, man. Uh, next up is a movie that I had on VHS, but I got rid of it for because I got the DVD. 
but this is actually the unrated special edition. Um, and I love this movie. I know people are kind of hit and miss with this series, but um, the first two are the best, in my opinion. Three was all right, and I haven't seen the fourth one yet. It came out uh, last year. I just haven't seen it. But this one's always been my favorite of the series. And, you know, I think that we can all kind of relate to this movie a little bit. Well, some more than others. But I can definitely relate to this movie a lot. Um, so I got the unrated version, special edition version of American Pie. So there you go. I, I like I like this cover art better because you got the girls on there and... Uh, Tara Reid, I know she's kind of, you know, out there and crazy, but, I mean, she's still a hottie. Um, and what's the other girl's name? Uh, Mina uh, Severi, uh, the girl right there. She's she's a cute girl, and um, I always forget her name. Al Allison uh, Hagen or Hannigan, the, you know, the redhead girl. She's a pretty girl, too. I mean, she was always a pretty girl on uh, Buffy and everything. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I love this movie, you know, it's a late 90s classic, you know, um, but, you know, I think in high school, you know, one of the things about high school is, is, is losing your virginity, and, you know, I think we've all kind of been there, I know I certainly have, <laughs> not going into details, but, <laughs> but that's American Pie, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to hear my stories, <laughs> next up is a Chris Farley movie that I've always enjoyed this one, um, have it on DVD, but uh, wanted to pick it up on VHS. Found it, you know, at a Goodwill, really cheap. But I've always liked this one a lot. Um, I mean, I like I, Tommy Boy is my favorite, and Black Sheep is good. But I like this one second best. I've always enjoyed this movie. I remember watching it all the time on uh, uh, Showtime. Used to run it all the time. I used to watch it on there. But I got Beverly Hills Ninja, and I love this because you know Robin Shoes in it. And the guy, the henchman guy with the goatee, um, that is Keith Cook uh, Hirabashi, who played uh, Reptile in Mortal Kombat 1 and Sub-Zero in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. And that guy's the real deal. So yeah, I mean, I love Beverly Hills Ninja. And Chris Rock is in it. You can't go wrong with Chris Rock. I've always liked Chris Rock. He's a funny guy. I like him. Next up is, uh, well, the next two are definitely 80s classics. Um, I love these movies. I grew up with both of them. Um, you know, this one um, is just just a, 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 an awesome movie, and it's kind of one of those movies that we all wish something like that would happen to us um, when people babysit. So you probably already know what I'm talking about, but I love this movie. Adventures in Babysitting. I have it on DVD, but why not? And my favorite, you know, my favorite scene is definitely when they're in the blues bar with Mr. Abbott Collins, the Ice Man, you know, God rest his soul. Nobody get out of this place without singing the blues. That's definitely my favorite part. Um, but yeah, I love uh, Adventures in Babysitting. Elizabeth Shue is still a babe. So there you go. Love this movie. And another 80s classic that I grew up with. And just, I was watching this the other night. And I'm like, this movie is just so awesome. And I know people really like this movie, but... I think at times people forget about it and stuff, but this movie is just so awesome, and it's funny, and the, the story is really good, and the story was, was new at the time and everything, but I mean, I love this movie, and it's got a kick-ass soundtrack. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I love the soundtrack. My favorite song is, Two Heads Are Better Than One, and... The band that like the band that does that like they're credited as Power Tool, but it's actually Nelson. You know, can't live without your love and affection. Because at the time the movie came out, like they were just starting out, and they uh, they wrote that song Two Heads Are Better Than One," and they wanted to use it in the movie, but their producer was like, "You know what? Use a different name. That way people don't get confused." Like it was really weird how they did it. But then that's why they used the name Power Tool for the movie. Because I was trying to find out about this band to see if they had any more albums or songs. And I couldn't find anything. And then I found out on, um, I think it was Wikipedia, that it's actually Nelson. And I read that, that story, how they like their producer told them to use a different name. It's, it's kind of weird. But then I found out, like, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. But 
I love this movie so much. And Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey is a great sequel. It's very underrated. I don't understand why, but both of these movies are great. And I know they want to do Bill and Ted 3, but I'm not really down for that because George Carlin passed away. It wouldn't be the same. That's just my opinion. Excuse me, a little parched. Um, and then my friend met Alex Winter. Um, Jordan, GRDNR87. He's on here. You know, check him out. He's got a lot of great content. Um, he met Alex Winter, and he said he was a dick. Like, because he had a, a, a Bogus Journey poster, and he asked them to sign it. He's like, could you please sign it Wild Stallions? And Alex Winter just looked at him and said, he's like, no, I don't, I don't do that. And I'm like, um, okay. Like, Alex Winter, the only thing you did was Bill and Ted, Lost Boys, Death Wish 3, and Freaked. And that's it. So, I mean, you're not a big, huge... I'm sorry that you're not a big, huge star like Keanu Reeves, but you don't have to be a dick. So anyway, next up is another uh, 90s comedy classic. Uh, it's my favorite from this actor, and I grew up with this movie. Don't mind having it on VHS. You know, I just, I love VHS, man. It's my favorite format. It's nostalgic because, you know, it was the top thing. I know people kind of put it down now, but VHS, and VHS is coming back. It's making a comeback. Um, that documentary is coming out. Rewind this. I want to see it so bad. I mean, I love VHS, and there's still stuff that's not out on DVD that's on VHS, so, you know, it's still significant, but, anyway, I'm rambling incoherently, but I love this movie, Billy Madison, I think it's, it's Adam Sandler's best, I know people will say Happy Gilmore, but I love Billy Madison more, but I love Happy Gilmore as well, so those are his best movies in my opinion. And next up is another childhood favorite, um, I grew up with this guy, I love him, I miss him, he passed away, too young in my opinion, I, I miss him a lot, I wish he was still around, because I know that if he were still alive, he'd still be making this, these kind of movies, these, this character, um, you know, I love, this is my favorite out of the series, um, and I think it's the best one in my opinion, but all I'm gonna say is, know what I mean? Ernest Scared Stupid. Still my favorite. Um, you know, I think it's still the best one of the series, in my opinion. Um, have it on DVD, but, you know, you need it on VHS. But um, I know that... Um, well, I'm, I'm something else. Um, I remember watching this on TV. They did, like, a double feature. It was this, and Ernest Goes to Jail, and then they showed, like, clips from the Hey Vern, It's Ernest show, like different clips. And then they showed like this cartoon for some reason. But I remember that, watching that at my grandparents. And it's just nostalgic. But, I mean, I love Ernest Scared Stupid. Come on. He's fighting these trolls and killing them with milk. And come on, it's, it's awesome, you know. Awesome stuff. Awesome sauce. <laughs> Next up is a sequel. Uh, I really enjoyed this sequel. Um, I have the, I have it on DVD, and I have the first one on VHS, DVD, and Laserdisc. Um, this one, um, is out on Laserdisc. They did a, they did two different versions. They did a widescreen version, which is pretty rare. If I can find that, I'll pick it up. But, um, you know, I picked this one up at a Goodwill on VHS. I love this sequel. Um, just a great one. Robocop 2. Isn't it a school day? <laughs> Love RoboCop 2. So underrated. And RoboCop 3, you know. The, the RoboCop 3, I know there was a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff going on, too. And I know it ruined Fred Decker's career. Why, I, I don't know. But, you know, RoboCop 3, I liked the gun arm. That was cool. But the jetpack was just a little too much. And the Japanese ninja robots and... Okay. All right, next up is two Disney movies. Um, it's in a series. It's There's only three movies in the series, trilogy. But these are the first two. Um, I've always liked these movies, um, and I've always liked the actor in the movie. And he retired um, after his wife passed away. And I really hope that he sometime recently decides to make a comeback because I've always enjoyed him. 
He's a great actor, in my opinion. I miss him. I wish he was still acting. Um, you know, so I definitely hope that he decides to make some sort of a comeback. But I got first, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which has the Roger Rabbit cartoon uh, Tummy Trouble with it, which I don't think is on the DVD. I think it's only on the VHS. But I love Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Um, and Matt Frewer's in it. I really like Matt Frewer. He's a very underrated actor, in my opinion. But I've always liked this. And Stuart Gordon uh, wrote the story. The guy who wrote Reanimator. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, he didn't write the screenplay, but he wrote the story. Um, that's pretty awesome. So that's Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And then I got the first sequel, which I know a lot of people are iffy about, but I've always liked this one. Um, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. I always like, yeah, I've always liked this one. Um, and, uh, what's her name is in it? Uh, Carrie Russell from Felicity. This was like one of her first movies. Um... Yeah, I mean, I'm and the guy that directed uh, Grease directed this. Uh, Ra yeah, Randall uh, Klesser. I think it's, yeah, how you say it. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I've always liked this one. And Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves, I always liked too. And next up is the final movie in a trilogy. Um, I have the first one on VHS and now this one. But the second one, I cannot find anywhere. And I really don't want to order it off eBay just to get it. I'll, I'll just wait until I find it somewhere. But um, I love this movie. It actually used to be my favorite in the series, but the original took its place after time. But this movie is still very good in my opinion, and it's actually upcoming in my reviews. Um, I got Back to the Future 3, and this is my favorite of the sequels. I love Back to the Future 2, but you know the Wild West is a place that I want to go back in time and visit. So... And I love the finale with the train. It's just so really cool, you know. Because, you know, in Back to the Future 1, they did the thing with the clock tower. Back to the Future 2, you know, they went back. And then they went back to the future, you know, and then back to the past. And, you know, and then they got struck by lightning. It was just creative. You know, it was really creative, you know, using the technology of the time and stuff. But I love Back to the Future 3. And Mary Steenburgen, I love her. She's just a great actress. She's great in anything. I love her so much. Alright, next is a uh, Nickelodeon TV show. Um, this one, I remember watching it growing up and um, kind of, I liked it. I mean, I've always liked this one. Um, it's just the first season's on DVD and that's it. And I know this is part of, I think, the second season or the third season. So this is actually not on DVD. But I got uh, Clarissa Explains It All Dating. Um, and there's Melissa Joan Hart. And then she's another one. She was another one that was always a cute girl. And then she grew up and did Sabrina and was like, damn! So there you go. Now she's a MILF. Um, so, and then I like I loved how Nickelodeon used to do the orange tapes. I love that. But I've always liked this show. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. <laughs> yeah. I've always, yeah, I've always liked this one. Next up is the only James Bond film that I got this time around. Um, this one I've seen, I remember liking it, um, and it's the one that started it all. Dr. No, it's actually still sealed, I haven't opened it yet. Um, yeah, I've always liked Dr. No. Um, it's got some good stuff in it, so there you go. Next up is a horror movie that um, I have it on DVD. But I know there's been a lot of debate on whether the DVD is the uncut version or not. So I found this at a Goodwill. Very surprised that I found this. Very happy to pick this up. And um, it is the uncut version. So I might just burn it to DVD-R just to have it for, you know, just, you know, whatever. But I know the uncut version is on Laserdisc. So I want to try to pick it up as well. But I've always enjoyed this movie and its sequel. So I got Waxwork, the uncensored version. It says uncensored, but uncut, uncensored, same thing. So yeah, that's Waxwork. All right, now um, this set came in the mail yesterday, and I had this as a kid. And what happened was it said two movies. Uh, my uncle sat on the first one and broke it. 
And then the second one, I didn't have a, the box to it. And then when I got them on DVD, I got rid of it because, I, I mean, I didn't have the box. Why keep it? So I've uh, been wanting to get this for a while. It does go for some high prices online, but I got it on eBay. I think it was like 8 bucks um, after shipping and handling and everything. But I got the uh, Ghostbusters uh, Collector's Pack. That's the first side, the spine, Ghostbusters 2. There's the tapes. Um... I remember the cover art being different for some reason. Like, see how up there it's like Ghostbusters. I remember that being the front cover, but this might have been a second press pressing or yeah, I think it is. But it's still cool to have. I mean, so there's Ghostbusters, and it says Ghostbusters is PG thirteen, but I thought Ghostbusters was rated PG. Um, yeah, I thought Ghostbusters was PG. But, whatever. And then the criminally underrated sequel, Ghostbusters 2. I love Ghostbusters 2. I don't know why I get shit on so much. I love... They're both great. They're both childhood favorites of mine. 80s classics. I love Ghostbusters. So, I don't know why Ghostbusters 2 gets shit on so much. I hope they don't do Ghostbusters 3 because it's too fucking late. Dan Aykroyd and... Um, Bill Murray need to get rid of their egos and just whatever. Uh, next up, next two are actually ones I just got before I shot this video. Have this movie, um, I have it. I have the screening copy and then I have the regular copy. But this one's actually the Canadian version. It has different artwork. And I love this movie. It's part of a series. It's my favorite of the series. Um, so all I'm going to say is Stand up and fight for the chance of your life. Hold your head high and never surrender. Reach for the sky on the wings of your dreams. You can fly higher and higher above all the rest. And be the best of the best. Da, da. Da, na, 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 na. <laughs> I had to have some fun. Best of the best two. Definitely my favorite of the series. Just, I love this movie so much. I don't know why they put Eric Roberts in front of Philip Ree because Eric Roberts, because Philip Ree is the real star of the movie, especially in this one. I love, love best of the best two. It's my favorite. And best of the best three is awesome as well. So yeah. And this next one, um, I've heard a lot of really good things about. Um, that's weird. The the head of the tape is yellow. I've never seen that. Um, I've, ne I've never seen this one. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I enjoy the actor in it, David Bradley from American Ninja. Um, so I'm looking forward to checking this out. Uh, it's called Hard Justice. And I know it's a ripoff of Hard Boiled on the cover. And I've heard a lot of good things about this one. So that's Hard Justice. I got that today. Uh, this next movie is one that I've been wanting to track down for a very long time. And I finally found it at a Goodwill of, of all places, a Goodwill. <laughs> um, but uh, this guy, um, I'm a fan of this guy. Um, I know a lot of people don't like him, but he's not a bad guy. I mean, just watch this movie and you'll see that he's really not a bad guy. I mean... I know he gets shit on a lot, but, you know, he's just, like he says in the movie, he's misunderstood, you know. But I got uh, Private Parts with Howard Stern. Um, I'm a fan of this guy. I like Howard Stern. I like to listen to his show. You know, he's fart man. Come on. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, this was a really good movie, um, you know. And I don't know why the guy gets hate, hated so much, but, you know. He just, he, like he says in the beginning, you know, he just tries to be funny. He's just misunderstood, you know. I love, I like the guy. I love the guy. You know, can't complain. And next up is another Beavis and Butthead thing that I got. I had this on VHS, um, but it didn't have a, it, a case that just had the tape. I bought it from a friend of mine. They were having a yard sale, and I didn't have it at the time. But I got Beavis and Butthead Do America again on VHS. This time with the slipcover. Uh, 
Next up is a movie that I absolutely love. It's a childhood favorite. Um, can't complain about this movie. I have it on DVD, but been wanting to get it on VHS for a while. Um, and it kind of goes with the next movie a little bit, but I love this movie. And all I'm going to ask is, Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? I love Good Burger so much. Oh my god. I love it, man. And once again, Nickelodeon orange tape. Love Good Burger. Love Keenan and Kel. Who loves orange soda? Kel loves orange soda. I do, I do, I do. And this next up, ne this next up, <laughs> this next one up is, uh, it has a guy from Good Burger in it. And I know that people put this movie down and stuff, but I've always liked it. I remember watching it a bunch of times growing up. Uh, don't have it at all, so that's why I picked up the VHS. But all I'm going to say is, I am Kazam! Kazam with my man Shaq. There you go. Uh, it's a screener copy, um, which is cool. So, yeah, Kazam. I am Kazam. Just checking the time here. Oh, we got plenty of time. Um, what's that other movie? He did? Steel. I got to get Steel. That movie was all right, you know. Uh, next up, the next bunch is some franchises that I've been getting more VHS into and the one getting more into. But first up is uh, definitely the best in the series and they and um, one of the greatest science fiction movies of all time, in my opinion. Um, just a classic. Uh, I had this on VHS and then I gave it to... This kid that I used to be friends with, and I kind of want it back, so I'll probably get it back from him or try to get it back from him. Um, but I love this movie so much, so I got the 10th anniversary director's cut letterboxed edition of There Can Be Only One Highlander with Christopher Lambert and Sean Connery. I love Highlander so much. Uh, they only should have made one. <laughs> And the TV show. And the cartoon. But that was it. Um, I love Highlander. Happy to get this on VHS again. Love this movie. Then I got Highlander 2 The Quickening. Uh, this is the theatrical cut. I'm going to give this one another shot. I saw it a long time ago. On like Showtime. They did a double feature of Highlander 2 and 3. And... Um, this, yeah, I don't remember much of the theatrical cut or the, the Renegade cut for that matter. It's been a long time since I've seen Highlander 2 in any version. But I'll give this one another shot. So, it was like 99 cents, so I can't complain. I remember watching this movie once and I cried because Sean Connery died. I think I was crying because of how shitty the movie was. I don't know. It, you don't kill Sean Connery. You just don't do that. And then I got Highlander Endgame. Used to have this on VHS, but I got rid of it for some stupid reason, like Highlander, the first one. But this one is actually really kind of the only sequel that is good. Because um, you have Christopher Lambert and Adrian Paul. I love Adrian Paul from the series. Um, this, Yeah, this was like the only sequel that was really good. So, that's Highlander Endgame. And the next set of... Two, three, four, five, six, seven VHS tapes. Um, it's a franchise that I've always liked as a kid. I mean, I've always enjoyed it. But for some reason, I just am now getting more into it. But, you know, all I'm going to ask is, are you ready to boldly go where no man has gone before? But first... I, these are just the movies from Star Trek. Um, first, I got Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Khan! I remember watching this. Um, I think it was on, like, UPN or something. It was right when Enterprise came on. And I remember they showed, like, a marathon of the Star Trek movies. Yeah. And I always liked this one. Khan! Then I got Star Trek IV. The Voyage Home. Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. This is the special home video version. 
that contains more than three minutes of never before seen footage. And this was the last one they did of the original crew of movies. So, and then I got all of the, well, not all of them, but I got Star Trek Generations, which I remember watching this uh, growing up on like HBO. It used to come on HBO a lot. So, and I like it because it's Patrick Stewart and uh, Shatner together, and Malcolm McDowell is the bad guy. And then I got Star Trek First Contact. This, uh, I don't think I've seen this one. This is the one with the Borg, yeah. I don't think I've seen this one. And this one I know I haven't seen. Star Trek Insurrection. That's got a cool, like, holographic kind of cover. Yeah, I know I've never seen this one. So, yep, you just get more into Star Trek. Um, like I said, I've always liked Star Trek. For some reason, I just never really got into it until now. So, um, yeah, so I'm getting more into Star Trek. All right, now this is all like big box. Well, most of it's like big box and clamshell stuff. Kid stuff, pretty much. First up is a Pixar movie that I don't... I don't even have this on DVD. I'm very surprised because this is like my favorite outside of Toy Story. Um, and I was at a Goodwill and I picked it up on VHS. I don't mind having it. And I know the prequel's coming out this year. Um, so I'm looking forward to checking that out. But I've always loved this movie. It's definitely my favorite Pixar movie besides Toy Story. Um, Monsters, Inc. Can't go wrong with Monsters, Inc., guys. Next up, this isn't a kid movie, but it's a big box release. Uh, 10 to Midnight got the original big box release. I'm trying to get a lot of these. Um, I know for Charles Bronson, they did Death Wish 3, The Mechanic, Mr. Majestic. I think that's all of them, and I know... Like Chuck Norris, I had Missing in Action 1 and 2. I need to get Forced Vengeance and Invasion USA of those. But, yeah, love 10 to Midnight. I already talked about it earlier. Next is another childhood favorite. I actually don't have this at all. So I was at a thrift store and I found it on VHS. So I finally picked up Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. And this is the movie. I've always liked this movie. I remember renting it a bunch of times. Yeah. So I love Jimmy Neutron. Patrick Stewart's in it as well. This one, um, next one, uh, another movie that I, I don't have on DVD for some strange reason. Another childhood favorite. I remember renting it all the time as a kid. Um, it's actually directed by Steve Barron, who directed the first Ninja Turtles movie and Coneheads. But I've always liked this, so I got The Adventures of Pinocchio, and it's got a, like a 3D kind of, um, it says Magic action art cover um jonathan taylor thomas i like him so yeah adventures of pinocchio martin landau another excellent actor uh next up is a macaulay culkin movie i'm trying to get i think this is it from the ones that i needed on vhs but i love this movie i know a lot of people don't but i mean i've always loved this one i had it on a recorded vhs my mom taped it for me when i was a kid so i, I wore that out and i have it on dvd but i mean i love this movie so much and macaulay culkin i know like he's kind of an outcast from hollywood and stuff now and he has every right to be because his dad fucked him over and fucked him up and that's why he's all like that now but i would definitely love to see macaulay culkin come back and do like you know, like an adult type of, you know, movies now. Not porn, but, you know, be like a psychopath. Because the guy can act. You know, there's no doubt about that. So I would love to see him make a comeback of sorts, you know. But I got Richie Rich. I've always liked this one. And you have Jonathan Price as, or jo Jonathan Price, I'm sorry. Jonathan Hyde as Cadbury. I like Jonathan Hyde from Jumanji and, Jonathan Price is the guy from Tomorrow Never Dies. Uh, so there you go. And next up, this is a Disney movie. Um, it is on DVD, but you can only get it through the Disney Movie Club. I mean, you can find it on eBay and stuff, but you know, you're know you going to have to pay like 50 bucks for it, which is ridiculous. So I picked it up on VHS just to get a hold of it. Um, I, I love this movie. I remember watching it a bunch of times growing up. I um, haven't seen it in a good while, but I love these characters, and it's Disney, so you can't go wrong. 
So I got DuckTales, woo! The movie, uh, Treasure of the Lost Lamp. So I definitely want to try and get this on DVD, but I'll keep the VHS, because I love... See, that's another thing about collecting VHS, Disney, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Now, the last three VHS I'm going to talk about is from a TV show that was on when I was growing up, and I'm trying to get all the VHS tapes. Um, they are on DVD, but they fucked up the DVD so bad. They released them in random order. Not all the episodes are out. Kind of like Ninja Turtles and Beavis and Butthead. But um, in the UK, they're actually in the process of releasing complete seasons of this. So I'm actually going to get them imported when they all come out. I think in June, the last one comes out. So I'll get those. But I got three Goosebumps VHS. First, I got, I think this was the first one to come out. Or the second one, I'm not sure. Stay out of the basement. So I'm trying to get all these now. Uh, a Night in Terror Tower. And this one is from Ultimate Goosebumps, and it's Werewolf Skin, Parts 1 and 2. And this was, yeah, this one's like in a regular box. These are pretty rare, um, the Ultimate Goosebumps. I think it's the last three or four tapes, because they really didn't promote them. They just kind of released them, and these are the rarer ones. Um, so, yeah, and the box isn't in the best shape, but I hope the tape plays good. So yeah, so that is my VHS and LaserDisc update. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Um, and stay tuned for a DVD update. Not the next video, but that'll be coming. And um, Indiana Jones, that'll be next. So thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you later. Peace out.